Namaste everybody, Citrus Aviation here for yet another video and today we have the top 10 models of 2022 and today I'm going to talk about the top models of the year for 2022 in the model aircraft community. <laughs> going to wait for the police car to go by once again. There's a fire station just down the road over this way and because of that they come by on a fairly frequent basis when they're responding to emergencies. There goes an ambulance right there. So yeah, if you ever hear fire trucks and such in the background of any of my videos, it's because there's a fire station nearby and there's constantly EMS equipment and fire trucks and such going in and out to respond to emergencies. So in today's video, I'm going to rank the top 10 models of 2022 based on the models that I myself have purchased. Now there are going to be a few candidates that we talk about that I did not buy, there'll be an honorable mentions, but yeah, let's get started this list. And also, this is just my list, so if you have a list of models that you think deserves to be in the top 10, put them down in the comments below. Let me know which models you believe should be top 10. So we're gonna start with number 10, which is the Virgin Atlantic Airbus 350-1000 by NG Models. So I was looking for a Virgin Atlantic A350-1000 because they fly into Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson International Airport and I need it for my model airport. And it's also a really cool aircraft that I've seen in person in Atlanta. So it was a no-brainer pickup for me because of that. Now, at the time this model was released, I had three choices. I could get the new NG version that had just been released, the AV some 400 version, that had also recently been released and had just come out to retailers, or I could get the older Gemini Jets version. I picked the NG Models version because, if you saw my Delta A350 comparison, I picked NG Models as making the best A350-900, and therefore I wanted to give them the first shot and A350-1000. So I got the Virgin Atlantic one, and it is a super nice model. I'm very pleased with it. Again, sometimes the NG model's A350 mold seems really plain, but I realized that that's actually an advantage to this aircraft because it's super clean, really nice mold, and I'm really happy to have it as one of the top 10 models a year. I believe it really is deserving of that, and NG models makes the best A350. So if you're looking for an A350, NG models is, I think, the way to go. They have a huge selection of A350s. They make them quite regularly, and you'd be very happy if you pick up one of the A350s. This Virgin Atlantic one is on the list because it's the one that I picked up this year, but they make a lot of great A350s that might suit your collection. At number 9, we do have a home up pick for me. This is the Delta Airlines 757-200 by NG Models. NG Models has for a long time made the best 757 ever since they introduced that mold. I want to say it's February 2018 is when they started making it, and they have made a bunch of really nice 757s. This one is the one that I picked up this year. There are a bunch of 75s NG has made. It is interesting that the 757 production has slowed down as they have made over 30 757s. In fact, I think they're over 50 now that they have made. And they've made so many versions that there aren't very many they haven't made. And so a lot of the ones they're making now are slight tweaks or variants of previous releases. And this is one of them. This is the Delta 757-200. This is November 704 X-ray, which was a form of Transworld Airways 757, and then Americans sold it to Delta in the early 2000s. This aircraft is really, really nice, and it is the low-density Generation 1 variant with winglets. And NG has made a couple Delta 75s before, but they haven't made any of winglets. This is the first of two they can make. They could also make the high-density variant as well. They also did make a 75 with winglets out in the Sky Team colors, but that aircraft is no longer in that livery. So this is the only 757 that they have made in the Delta Airlines colors that is currently in service. The other ones have all been retired and or repainted. It's a really nice representation. They sew the SATCOM boxes in the correct locations and in the correct shape. NG has about five or six different SATCOM box shapes that they use, and they'll place the correct shape on the correct aircraft and even shade it correctly, which is really nice. And this model has been super nicely detailed. The one criticism I've seen people make about this model, which would be accurate, is that the engine shape is slightly off. Now, initially, when I reviewed an NG757, I did a comparison with the Gemini one. I thought the engine size was too small. Now that I've examined it more in detail, with more time, it is the correct size. The shape is slightly off. They need to change the cover to the engine just a little bit and it needs to be slightly shorter. In this, in the hot air exhaust portion of the engine, it needs to have that dark gray color kind of come up about halfway and then that will make it correct to the actual 
Frank and Winnie 2037 set Delta has on my Sam 5. Other than that, critique, the model is excellent. The detail is great, so it's the crease between the cabin and the cargo compartment. The details are excellent. It's really, really good. And so therefore, that ninth position. Coming in at eighth position, we have the American Airlines Airbus 321, also by NG Models. This is their newest mold that they have produced that I have picked up, the Airbus family. This and the A350 both came out about the same time. And uh, this is their A321. This is in the flagship Valor livery. This is a really nice livery that I'm happy that American produced. It is an honor of military veterans and the Medal of Honor recipients. It's so cool that American made such a great livery and a great plane. And NG Models did a really nice version of it with their new mold, which I can say is outstanding. Their Airbus mold is excellent. I have really no complaints about it. All the details are correct to an actual Airbus. I like how it shows the two section wing route. So a wing route for an Airbus actually has two sections. There's the main curvature, and then there's a second smaller curvature right where the wing comes in contact with the fuselage that extends out into the fuselage a little bit. There's like a second layer of curve there, and NG models have shown that amazingly. The nose shape is basically perfect. I can't find a single flaw with this mold. It's basically exactly like an Airbus. And when I used to walk on the ramp, I used to walk on these things. So it's really cool to see that NG Models put such great care and detail into making the Airbus accurate. In addition, this is a fantastic livery and one of the nicest versions that NG has made all year. Next up at seventh position, we have the Aviation 400 Air New Zealand 777-300ER. This was from a batch they announced last year and that they came out with this year in the summertime. So I'm really happy to finally get one. I had initially ordered six through the RM model store, but we all know how that story ended and I didn't get them. And so I've now been on a mission to pick up all six that I was going to order from RM from other retailers. I think we'll pick up this one from a guy in Canada who had a good deal on it. And so I bought it from him, brand new. It's a really nice model. The printing on this model is really nice. A lot of people, of course, like to talk about the red beacon lights or 3D pieces. People have talked about that before. You probably already know about that by now. But some things that some people haven't noted too much that I would like to point out is the excellent APU housing detail that's at the correct safe angle. And it even has a little indent where the actual APU exhaust port is. In addition, it also has the light on top as well, as well as the other little protrusion in the back. Really nice detail here. The gears tilt and roll, and also with basically, I think it's every Aviation 400 model, you get a plastic stand. So, even though I don't think the stand is that great, you at least get a stand. So, you can display on a stand if you choose to. The tilting gears is a nice feature. The print's good. Basically, everything about this model is excellent. The only issue I've ever had with the Triple Sevens is I think the Triple Sevens might be a little too thin. The NG and the JC Wayne Slant Gemini versions are a little bit thicker, which I think is actually slightly more accurate because the 777 is a gothy, giant aircraft. And I think the Aviation 400 fuselage might just be a slightly too, too small circumference. Other than that, it's an excellent model. In terms of standard budget, if you're looking for a good place to buy model aircraft at a great deal, go check out the Midwest Model Store. He offers a 10% discount through my code Citrus. And if you use the affiliate link in the description, I also receive a 5% commission on every sale. And so therefore that helps to support the channel if you're looking for a way to support the channel while buying the models you are gonna buy anyway at a reduced rate. So you can't lose if you go use the affiliate link down below. So go check it out, see if there's some models that you want and happy collecting. At number six, we have the Gemini Jets Alaska 737 Max 9 in the Pacific Wonders livery. Now this model is on the list for two reasons. One, Gemini Jet printing is top tier quality. In my opinion, Gemini Jets has the best prints in the entire industry. They do the best job with the tampo printing and making the prints come out clear and crisp. Even NG Models has had a few issues where some of their prints can kind of come out a little bit blurry or like unfocused or like difficult to read. That is not the case with Gemini Jets. The tampo printing is outstanding. This model represents the Pacific Wonders livery on the Alaska Max 9 super, super well. It is a gorgeous representation of that fantastic livery. In addition, this model has no QC issues. At least the one that I have has no QC problems. The engines are correctly leveled. The model is gorgeous. 
And the Gemini Jets Max mold is probably the strongest narrow body mold overall. Maybe the 75, but the 75 is a little bit outdated. This is a modern Gemini slant JC Wings mold, it has no QC issues, the quality is excellent, and it's a really good model. And I wanted to represent a Gemini Jets model on the list, and this one is really, really good. I've had no issues with this one, and therefore I can recommend it to people. Now, of course, your experience may vary. Of course, with any of these models, you might have QC issues, you might not. It just sort of is the reality of the industry nowadays. At number five, we have the NG Models KLM Boeing 787-10. This is the sixth Boeing 787 from NG Models in my collection. So, as some of you may know, I am a little bit biased towards thinking the NG Model 787 is one of the best molds out there. And I'm going to hold to that. I still believe it's one of the best wide body molds that exists to this day. This is the only 787 I've picked up this year. And I wanted to put a 787 from NG on here because it is outstanding. Now, I haven't bought one of the Gemini or JC Wings ones recently. If I had, it would have been the Tokus Airlines 787 from last year that would have been on the list. But of course, I wasn't making top 10 lists last year. Maybe I'll do some lists for retroactively. Let me know if you want to see that. But yeah, the KLM 787-10 from NG is excellent. They haven't made that many 787s this year that I found to be super attractive or interesting. Unlike last year where they made a ton. But the 787-10 is one that I picked up this year. It's an excellent model. I picked up for Atlanta because they do fly into Atlanta. The detail of this model is excellent. The curvature of the wing root is outstanding. The details are great. They put SATCOM boxes and antennas in the correct location. The liveries are really nice. The prints on these have been pretty good. I haven't had any printing issues with my NG 787s. And also I've had, most importantly, no QC issues with any of my six NG model 787s. So that's always good to see. As a result, this model makes it to the top five, which all these are excellent models, but really these top five are special planes that are super amazing. And NG787 makes this list. At number four, we have the fantastic, amazing NG Models United 737-800 in the Star Wars livery. This is the episode nine livery that United brought out to promote the Rise of Skywalker movie, which was really awesome. The plane is. The movie, not so much. But the airplane is awesome. It has two separate sides of it. There's the light side on the port side, and the starboard side has the dark side. And even the interior shows this too, with, with red and blue headrest, which is really cool. I got to see this plane before it was retired in January 2022. I got to walk inside of it. It was a great plane and a great representation of that model. The detail on here is outstanding, showing all the little details, the star fighters, the stars, the Rise of Skywalker text. Everything is great. There are a couple of printing issues with this model, which is why I did not end up putting it number one, even though it was definitely in that consideration. There's a couple of issues with the lightsabers having some weird shading, the kind of an orange shading on Kylo Ren's lightsaber. But overall, an outstanding model, one that I recommend to people, particularly who are looking for a unique piece in their collection. Making it to the podium, we have number three, the Gemini Jet Emirates 777 300ER flaps down. Specifically the flaps down variant. I bought two models from this release set. Both this Emirates 777 300ER and the American 777 300ER which were both from this release set. These models are pivotal to my collection because I'm collecting a bunch of 777s. I want to get a lot of them or at least most on operation today and I didn't have an Emirates or American and they were both released at the same time. These were both part of the June 2022 releases and they are outstanding models. They will look bunch of good models in that release set, but these were two of them. Unfortunately, the American does not make it on this list because my version has a couple of little scratches that were on the wing. I was able to rub one off, but another one appears to be a glob of metal or something. And so that's not going to make it because of that issue. And so because the American failed, I picked up this Emirates one because I need it for the collection and I was hoping that it would make it into the video. And it met all the standards I was looking for. There's no QC issues. The print on Gemini Jets, as I mentioned, is top tier. And of course, the flaps down very specifically is a model and feature that you can't get from any other manufacturer other than the Gemini JC Wings mold. And it looks so cool. These also have tilting gear and all my wheels actually roll on this one. So that's pretty impressive. Well, maybe the exceptional nose gear wheel, it doesn't really want to move. But on that, it's a good model. The APU housing detail is the most crisp and best on this JC Wings slant Gemini version. 
and just the detail is really good. It's not quite the same level of detail that you might have on an NG models, but it is still outstanding and I think would be a great addition to anyone's collection. Therefore, it makes pole position. Coming in at the silver or runner-up position, we have the Hobby Masters 1 to 70 second scale United States Navy E2D. This model is an incredible piece of engineering for the collection hobby, mostly because of a couple of reasons. One, Hobby Master puts a lot of care and work into making their mold as accurate as possible to the real thing. Because it is 1 to 70 second scale, you can also put on a lot more details. So this one has like every single antenna this real aircraft has in the correct position and correct shape. Like there's literally like six or seven different shapes of antennas on this model. Like they went to great care to ensure that this is put together as accurately as possible. When you get it, there are some pieces you have to put together, but that's totally fine. And the detail, even though it's a resin mold, the detail is great and the quality is really good. Like it's put together really solidly. Like I don't have concerns really with anything breaking. The only concern maybe is the landing gear having all that weight on it. But it is still pretty solid. I don't really have too much concerns about it. The only reason this model dropped out of the number one position, this would have been the best model of the year without a shadow of a doubt, is that this model had two QC issues. One prop blade was bent. I was able to bend that back in the safe, so not too bad. But one of the landing gears is missing one of the gear covers, and this is a huge disappointment. Uh, considering the fact that this is supposed to be a super highly detailed accurate model, it is missing a gear cover, which is so unfortunate. Because otherwise, it would have been the number one model of the year. It's so good. The detail is excellent. It's a great representation of the real United States E2D Hawkeye operated by the United States Navy. So that brings us up to the runner-up models, and there are four that I want to talk about in this video. The first one is, I'm going to talk about a regional jet. This is the Mesa CRJ-900. This is the new Gemini Jets mold that is basically an update version of their existing CRJ mold, which is really good, except they've added antennas. They've made two versions this year on the mold. They've made the Lufthansa in the current livery, and they've made the Mesa House CRJ-900. This particular Mesa house is the white one. They also have the more recent gray house colors, but this is the white one, and I assume at some point Gemini will make the gray one. It is a really nice mold, and probably one of the best regional jet molds out there, and if you can get them without QC issues, they are great models. The next one I want to talk about is the NG model 737-900. Now, in this video, there are shoutouts to all three 737 variants, and this one is the 737-900. This is the Continental Retro one that I picked up. Also, I would like to mention the United Continental Globe livery is great. I don't have that model yet, that'll be coming early next year, but this Continental Retro one is really nice. They've made a bunch of very nice 737-900s, and this is another nice one. Two models I want to shout out that I don't have in my personal collection yet, but are on order. We have the HYJL Wings Airbus 321 Air Canada. This one's a super nice model from everything that I've heard and from the pictures I've seen. However, this model is not going to arrive in stock to retailers until next year. So it's a very good chance that that model will appear on next year's video. And it did not arrive in time to make it onto this video and for me to inspect it. Um, if it had met my expectations and requirements, it would have been on the video and it would have made it onto the list. However, it did not arrive in time, therefore it will not be in the video. Same thing with the NG model's Dream Take Flight 7879. Now I said a lot of 787s weren't that interesting this year. However, this Dream Take Flight livery, which Boeing has as a house livery, is such a nice livery. The detail is incredible, and NG models transpose those details and incredible livery onto a model that is excellent. JC Wings made a version as well. However, the NG version, from all I can tell, seems to be better, and therefore I'm excited to pick that one up. And it'll be coming soon, but I wanted to mention it here because if I had that one, it probably would have been in the top three. But because I don't have that one yet, I can't put it in the video because I don't have a chance to inspect it yet. I have to look at all these models and determine if they are good. Because just because it looks good on pictures doesn't mean it's actually going to be a great model when you receive it. And so therefore, I couldn't give it a grade because of that. Of course, I should also give a shout out to the greatest disappointment of the year so far. This is the JC Wayne's Airbus Beluga. I was hoping this model would be amazing. In pictures, it looks great. However, my copy has a couple of issues I'm still trying to walk out. But once those issues are walked out, it'll be a great model. It just can't be one of the greatest models of the year. 
due to a couple of QC issues that are quite significant, such as a wing coming off and one of the pegs for the interactive doy being globbed up. So I have to kind of scrape that out and then the peg will go in no problem. That's still a QC issue that's quite significant. So that brings us on to the number one model of the year. My favorite model of the year, and I think the best one that has been made so far. It is the NG Models Boeing 737-700 in Southwest Missouri 1 Special Livery. This model is incredible. The Missouri 1 livery is already one of my favorite Southwest liveries, number two right behind New Mexico 1. And the NG Models version is excellent, using the outstanding Boeing 737 mold. It also has great print quality compared to a lot of the NG versions I've seen. This one has one of the better print qualities and the excellent level of detail on here is great. It is amazing how they detail this model to look just like the actual Southwest plane that flies today. They did a great job of representing the Missouri 1 livery, which is a very complicated livery with the state flag of Missouri on it. They painted it onto this model. It looks great. And it's, in my opinion, the best model of the year. So, congratulations, NG Models, for getting the best model of the year. And for Missouri 1, which is one of my favorite aircraft in real life, the model is one of my favorite models. So, those are my top 10 models of the year. Let me know what your top 10 are down below. And before I take off, for the end of the video, I wanted to show y'all something. This is the very first ever release that I sent as an aircraft dispatch. I recently got signed off and I had my first day of work as an aircraft dispatch the day after I got signed off on my comp check and uh, I sent a release. Uh, one of the duty managers suggested that I print off my first ever release and frame it. So here it is, my first ever release is framed, signed in my own name, and this really is the culmination of quite some time of work, really. This is the culmination of about six months of work to get to where I am today. I went to aircraft dispatch school, did that for five weeks, passed both the written and oral examination. Then after that, I got hired at Commute Air to be an aircraft dispatcher, went through the ground school, which took about a month. Then I was on the floor for two months, got signed off, and now I'm able to send releases in my own name as a full aircraft dispatcher, not just as a dispatcher in name or as a certificate holder, but as an axle signed off dispatcher and airline. So I'm really happy about this achievement and I wanted to say it with y'all for the before the ending the video. So yeah, that'll be over here in the background. Eventually I'm going to hang it up here on the wall about where the Christmas tree is, but that is an achievement I'm very happy to have made. So that being said, I want to thank y'all so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day and God bless you.